Welcome fellow game developers to 3D modeling with dummies. Getting started with Blender. Now in this video we are going to basically just go over the basics of Blender and create like a sort of crate for you guys to just see and we'll even go through the process of exporting it as well just so you know how to export it for different game engines. Now I just want to mention this I've recently started 3D modeling and started releasing 3D models on my Patreon so if you become a top tier patron at Wolf Plus on the Patreon you'll get access to all those uh 3D models for free or you can actually buy them separately in the Patreon shop as well as long as well as getting all the source code for any previous uh, tutorials we have done in the past but anyway guys let's get started with this so the first things first head over to Blender and go to download now you want to download probably the latest version an LTS version uh, click it over download and select which one is good for you now I already have it installed so I'm not going to install it but it is just as simple as this you can also head over to Steam and download it on Steam so you can update it through Steam and stuff like that so once you have that we're going to be opening up Blender and when you open up Blender for the first time you're probably going to get a bit overwhelmed you're going to be uh, greeted with this screen uh, it probably won't say you have any recent files if it does then you're lying this isn't your first time using Blender um, so what we're going to do is just click off that first screen and you're going to be in this scene with a camera a light and a cube now just for this video I'm going to press a a is going to select all the objects in my uh, collection here um, and I'm just going to press X and it's going to say delete selected objects I'm going to click delete and there you go now we have a clean slate to start from now I'm going to just go over a few of the basics of blender um, for stars middle mouse button is going to allow us to rotate or orbit around the uh, point you are focusing on you can also hold shift and hold the middle mouse button to move left and right now I do have emulate um, I do have uh, emulate numpad on to do that you go over to edit preferences and go to input and at the top here you want to turn on emulate numpad unless you already have a numpad now I do have a numpad as well um, I just got you so used when I didn't have a numpad to using the numbers on the top of my keyboard um, that did now the numbers on the keypad number uh, the keypad numbers are used to change your orientation or facing so if we add in a cube so to add a new mesh into your scene by the way your hierarchy is on the right here what we're going to do is press shift a go to mesh and I'm going to select a cube and you can see we've got this cube now if we want to look at the front of this cube we're going to press one on our numpad or if you don't have a numpad and you turn emulate numpad on just one on your keyboard will do and that will bring you around here to see the front of this cube now if you want to see the top you can press 7 if you want to see the right side you press 3 uh, and that's essentially ways to look in or for graphic now we are going to turn this cube into like a simple crate we're not going to do too much advanced things for this video uh, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit mode so by pressing tab on your keypad you, you switch to edit mode and I'm going to press alt Z. that's going to put you in x-ray mode so you can actually click vertices through the um, mesh itself now all I'm going to do is I'm going to press 1 so we go into front view and I'm going to select the whole box by just clicking, uh, left clicking and dragging across the screen. Now to move objects in Blender what we do is we press G and we can move them around. Now sometimes you don't want to move them freely you actually want to lock them in an axis. To do that you literally press G and you select the axis. So the blue line going across the middle of our screen here is the Z axis. So if I press Z, you can see it will now, I can even move my cursor left and right and it's only gonna go up and down. If we right click, we will not ch save any change we did. It'll reset back to its default position. Now I'm gonna press G X and we can move it left and right. And if we come out of this view, you'll see there's also one going backwards here, which is the Y axis. So if you press G Y, you can see that highlights and we can go back and forward. So let's actually move this cube up. We want the origin of it to be at the bottom of the cube. So when we place this in our world, it sits flat on whatever object we have. So to do that, I'm going to press G and Z. And I'm actually going to go up to the top here. And inside of my snap, I'm going to select the grid. So it snaps to grid points. And um, then when we come back, if we select it, by the way, I selected all the vertices by pressing A. So you can individually select the vertices and press G to move it as well. Um, but we're going to move them all. So we move the whole cube itself. So I'm going to press G and Z. 
And now if I hold control, it will snap to the vertice. So you can see it's snapping across there. And we just want to move it so it's snapped on this red line there. So the next thing to do, now it's flat on its thing, is we want to, I'm going to press Alt Z to come out of um, edit, uh, not edit modes, the uh, x-ray modes. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select face select. And what I want to do is I'm going to press A again because I want to select all the faces of this. You can individually select them by clicking them and holding shift to then select multiple. Uh, but it's easier if you want to select everything just to press A. And now what we want to do is we want to inset the faces. So we want to make sure we have more faces inside of our cube. To do that, I'm going to press I, and you can see nothing's happening. So what we have to do is change it to individual mode. If you look at the bottom of my screen, you can see it says confirm, cancel, tweak, outset, boundary, and individual. What we want to do is press I again to set to individual mode. And as you can see, we can now individually shrink all of our um, faces. What we're going to do is we're just going to bring it in a little, it doesn't matter how much we bring it in, something like that. And then what we can do is inset or make all of these faces then go into the box to give it that sort of crate frame around it. Um, so to do that, I'm going to press Alt and E. That's going to bring up this extrude face, right? Extruding means to create more faces by pulling them out of the cube. Um, so if I select extrude, you're going to see it's bringing out faces from the ones we selected. I'm going to press control Z because we don't want to do that what we want to do is extrude along its normals normals are the direction uh, of the the face is facing so to do that we want to press alt E and select extrude faces along normals and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this in by moving the mouse you can see I can move them out and in what I want to do is just bring them in ever so slightly to give that crate feel that might actually be too much, so I'm going to just, I have undone too much there. So I'm going to Alt E, Extrude, and I'm going to bring it in just ever so slightly. I think that is good enough. And there you go. We have a basic, a very basic um, crate, if you would say. It just needs colouring in. Now one thing, if I come into out of edit mode, you can see it's quite hard to see some of the edges and where the faces are. So to fix that, what I do is make up in the top right here where we have this little render, this little drop down, click this and go down to cavity. You're going to see that adds an edge to most things. However, we want to change this type to both so you can then see um, more detail along this. This just makes it easier to um, change. And if you go to world space and screen space and change the valley, up a little this is just going to make it so you can see the shadows are darker it makes it a lot easier to see your cube with what you're working with and then when you want to see the actual rendered cube you can press this one here um, and it will show you a rendered with lighting um, and that's kind of what it'll look like in game with some ba default lighting in the skylight anyway back to this so what we want to do is we're going to make we're going to add a, a little notch into this to look just one for now just for this just so you guys can see how it would look like with some scuffs like if you've chipped the wood and just this is only so i can show you this tool so i'm going to press Control r and that's going to create a loop cut around an edge now depending on where my mouse is it will put a loop cut um, in a different place we want this loop cut to go there and that's going to add more vertices so if we go in vertices mode more lines and vertices and faces to our geometry and there you go you can see that's gone the whole way around now what i want to do is use the bevel tool to create a little notch in our crate which kind of looks like a bit of damage like it's been chipped now i'm going to press Control b and you can see we get this line coming out of our thing here which is it looks good but it's not doing what we want it to do it's not creating the notch that's because it's currently in edge mode to create a bevel around the edge we want to bevel the vertice so to do that we press v on the keyboard and as you can see as we pull out now we're creating this like notch so i'm just going to pull it out a little bit and now if you look we have this like damaged chip coming out of there now you could come along here and do a few different chips so let's go and select these ones here and i'm going to press gg to slide these along its axis i'm going to bring it here select this face press Control b and just bring it out again again you can see it's not working so we need to press v to go into vertice mode there we go Sometimes you have to come out a bit further than you think. And this time we're going to create a little bigger chip. This is just so we can add a bit more dramatic flair to it. Now, if you've got two chips in, you could go around this whole thing, add some loop cuts and add more detail to it. But we want to keep this low poly just so we have that for our game. You don't want to go too high with your polys. Um, and a poly count is like essentially the 
um, the faces, the triangles this will create, you want to keep it low poly. You don't want too many polygons in your geometry. Now, to finish this off, what we're going to do is I am just going to color this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is down here on the right, you have got your tools or your modifiers. And what we want to do is go to our material properties here. And we're going to hit new. And on here, I'm just going to rename this to create by double clicking that. Now, this is the material that is going on our cube or our crate. And essentially, what we want to do is we could set this to a brown color like this darken it and you can see we can't see anything happening that's because we're currently in modeling mode or well solid view so up here you can see you can change it to different ones you can go to full x-ray mode or uh, basically wireframe mode you can go to solid view and then you've also got shaded view here but then you've got rendered view which will in which will calculate the lights and that in your scene but because we have no light you can see it's currently just like a dark box so what we're going to do is we're going to select shaded which has a light pre-built essentially if you drop this down you can see you can mess around with the lighting and stuff like that uh, but normally leaving it at default is fine this view is only just so you can see what it kind of looks like and you can see it's quite a dark brown box we can lighten this up a little and that looks good but I like to use a color palette and select the colors myself for the actual mesh. Um, obviously, you can just change the base color and do different things like that. We can up the roughness. We can make it a shiny box by changing the roughness or make it a really uh, rough box, which I'm actually going to keep it at the solid one roughness. Um, but this, this isn't really looking great. I would prefer to use an image texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select base color, this little dot. And I'm going to go to image texture in the second column. This is going to allow me to use an image as the texture of the box. I'm going to open, oh, open and I'm going to go down to my 3D models, textures, palettes. And I'm going to use this texture palette here. It's a very tiny uh, grid of colors you can see there. And if I open the image, you're going to see our box looks kind of weird. It's all gradient. What I want to do is go under here and change linear, the interpolation, to closest. So it's going to select the right one. And as you can see, we have a very colorful crate now. This could be saying what you're after. If you want that, that's cool. But I don't actually want this. I want to select specific colors in this. So to do that, I'm going to go over to our UV editing tab at the top. And I'm going to go back in here. I'm also going to go to the solid view. And on the left here, you can see if we zoom in, we have our color palette. Uh, and what we want to do is on the right here, press A to select all of our boxes. And you can see if we select on this left side now, press A and press G to move this around, you're going to see it moves around our, um, it moves around our, uh, where the colors are on our fig. So these line up to the box. Now what we can do is press A. I'm going to press S on this side so we can scale it down. I'm just going to tap zero to make it tiny. So you can see it's now a tiny cube and our box is kind of looking a bit broken. To fix that, I'm going to press G and I'm going to move it to a brown color here. We might even go a bit lighter brown. Press tab and you can see it's now a brown color. However, I want to change the color of some individual faces. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to select the inner face here, these inner faces. And I'm just holding shift, by the way, to actually select each um face and making sure it stays so now you can see we have all the inner faces done what i'm going to do is i'm going to press g and i'm going to move this to a slightly lighter color to give that separation of the box and there you go you can see this is how it works we can also go even crazy with this we could change the colors to be like a blue and then you can have a blue box or whatnot but i'm just gonna move these back down here and have a nice brown looking crate um obviously we can add more detail into this or whatnot we could even come into our um little chips here and make these darker maybe a couple darker so you can see they're like you can see them a bit more dramatically in there uh, they've been chipped we're trying to outline they've been chipped or damaged and there you go this is essentially all you need to do to get a first element a first mesh done i've just renamed the mesh up here to crate just so when we export it and import into a new game it says crate and what i'm going to do i'm going to go back to my modeling tab or layout tab which is the default and I'm just going to hit save to save this file. Now I'm going to come out of here and I'm going to go to objects. And I'm just going to rename this to create. Oh, not create, crate. And hit save blender file. 
Now we've saved that file, we could actually use that file in some game engines. We'll accept the Blender file as um, the the mesh, the object, but we want to export it so it works in more than just uh, game engines that support Blender. What we want to do is we want to go to File here, go down to Export, and we can select a bunch of different files. Now, a universal supported one is usually something like Wavefont, FBX, or a GLB. Now, if you use Godot, which I use, I would personally go with a GLB uh, file here. So that's the one I'm going to show you how to export with. So I'm going to select this. We're going to go to Object and leave it named as Crate. But on the right, right, what we want to do is make sure we have include the selected object. As you can see, this is selected. Uh, we want to go to our transform and make sure Y is up because in Blender it uses um, Z axis as it's up. But in most game engines, Y is the up. So we can change that to the up. Um, and then in our data, we want to go to our mesh and make sure apply modifiers on although we haven't used any modifiers for this we'll get into that in a separate video i always make sure apply modifiers is on um, and in material make sure it is set to export because we also want the material to come with it. now you can probably untick animation skinning and shape keys like that because we're not currently using any of that but we're just going to keep it on it's not going to harm the project for keeping it on so what i'm going to do is just click export and then if we just go to that folder as you can see, we now have this GLB file, which we can, we can even drag it into here and add in another one. So import GLTF, and you can see we've got another crate, where is that crate gone? There you go. You can see we've got another crate, which we've just dropped in here, um, which is actually the, GL, uh, the GLB file. Um, we're just going to delete that because obviously that's not what we wanted. Um, but you can see we could drag this into our game engines like Godot and stuff like that. And that is essentially Blender or 3D modeling for dummies. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button. And don't forget to check out the Patreon if you want to have a look at the assets we've created. And also join the uh, Muddy Wolf uh, gang. The uh, There's a bunch of different things you can get on there such as source code, podcasts and also some behind the scenes content. As well as if you go for the newest, highest Wolf Plus tier you can get our 3D models for free. Well, you're still paying for the tier, but you get them for free rather than paying them from the shop. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for joining in. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.